the all new fifth generation Volkswagen Caddy. Let's take a closer look. The new Caddy is on the new Volkswagen MQB platform, which is the same platform that the Golf 8 has. Therefore, the dimensions of the new Caddy has also changed. It's 1.85 meters wide, which is 62 millimeters wider than the previous generation. It's 4.5 meters long, which is also 93 millimeters longer than the previous generation. And also, compared to the previous generations, I think the new Gen 5 Caddy also looks a lot more refreshing than the previous facelift did. And what I mean by that is you have that very Volkswagen family-esque uh, front headlamp unit with these really nice chrome detailing which connects the two headlamps together through this front uh, strip as well. Further down, I mean, this is something also which grabs your attention right away, this gorgeous honeycomb structure which goes all the way across the width of the lower bumper. The Caddy comes in a panel van, a camper van, as well as the MPV variant. You can either have it with a longer wheelbase version or the short wheelbase. What you see here is the short wheelbase MPV version in a Costa Azul blue metallic color in the MOVE launch edition trim line. Amongst the other things that are new for this generation are the wheels. You can for the first time get 18 inch wheels optionally uh, for your caddy. However, the one you see here is 17 inches, but I like the look of it and I think it complements this overall design and this very nice youthful color of the caddy and fills the wheel arches uh, pretty well. Another thing that they've really worked on for this new generation is the aerodynamics. So they claim that with the new engine, and we'll talk about the engines later on, and this new aerodynamic design, the Caddy is now up to 12% more efficient. And we'll test that out once we get driving on the road. What I also like about this new trim line is the fact that you have things like contrasting outside rear view mirrors here in glossy black, a nice gray metal finish, a roof rack as well. You might also be happy to hear that, of course, the front suspension is McPherson strut, but while the rear axle retains its solid axle configuration, you now have coil uh, springs. So the handling is supposed to be a little bit better, as well as retaining that load bearing capacity. And we'll again test that out once we're driving. Here at the back of the Caddy, I really like this new design. I think it's uh, very similar to the rest of its family in the modern generation. So I see a little bit of the Volkswagen up in this design. I see a little bit of the T-Cross in the tail lamp design, and it really pops. You have, of course, this LED, but you also have chrome with the nice signature on the inside. Just these little details, which, um, you know, it makes you feel happy when you look at it, I would say. Also the contours, like there's a lot of little contours and angles here. It also tucks in below this, so it looks really nice and this of course has a huge opening so it, it's bigger than my apartment door it's like a garage door really but of course this is to enable you to easily load in uh, items and now because of the newer dimensions you can load two euro pallets inside the caddy so this long and completely openable rear hatch uh, enables easy access to that all right let's take a look first of all check this out soft clothes <laughs> in a caddy that's nice again huge door but of course thankfully very powerful pneumatic struts as well if we get rid of the parcel shelf voila this is an mpv and space is what it's all about so let's talk numbers 3.1 cubic meters in the short wheelbase when you have everything out and 3.7 cubic meters in the long wheelbase version you can also get this as a seven seater um, but as you can see, obviously, we only have the five-seater version, but there would be an additional set of two seats which pop up like this, which in the short wheelbase version will not really give you much uh, trunk volume. So if you're interested in having a short wheelbase seven-seater, uh, make sure you go to the showroom and check out, you know, how the trunk looks and make sure you're satisfied with the, the limited space. At launch, you only have the one two-liter TDI option available. So that's the two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder diesel engine. You can have this in different states of tune. There's a 75 PS, there's 102 PS, and there's 122 PS, or metric horsepower. This is a 122 PS version of that engine. This comes with either a six-speed manual or the new shift-by-wire dual-clutch seven-speed DSG. 
As you can see, they're longitudinally mounted, sorry, transversely mounted, and they're front wheel drive only. However, the good news is going forward, you will have more options. There will be the 1.5 TSI, which is a turbo four petrol engine. There will also be a plug-in hybrid. There will also be a TGI, which is the, um, um, the bivalent natural gas engine, but there will not be a fully electric version. So the plug-in hybrid is as close to electrification as you will get. The door is really nice and tall, with this tall body gives you really good ingress. If we look at the door itself, the materials are, well, fairly hard I would say. While the entire panel itself has a little bit of squeegeeness to it, the surface is quite hard, but you do get some different patterns. So there's a little bit of a texture here, a different pattern down here, all beat in the same color. Further down though, however, you do have soft touch material, so this is nice. There's a textile uh, material and some sponge or some cushioning here for your elbow. Familiar switch gear and a large door pocket. Now, if you were to look inside, <laughs> this is where the biggest change is uh, apparent. First of all, I really like the little touches like the top of the dash uh, where you have a place to drop in your clipboard as a commercial vehicle or, you know, just to drop some keys, your gloves. Very useful and even for a, uh, a, you know, a, a personal usage, a, a, a consumer version of this MPV, it's also useful to keep some, you know, your phone and stuff like that. But ultimately, the new generation brings with it new technology and we see that right away with the virtual cockpit, the digital cockpit, as well as the new 10 inch touchscreen. The steering wheel as well as the new steering wheel that we've seen before, which I really like. And the, the seats as well are a lot more um, familiar, but I do like this textile uh, pattern. It's always nicer to have. And I do appreciate that little bit of blue piping in the stitching, which kind of complements the color that we saw on the outside. Getting inside, well, because of this tall ingress, it's very easy. I don't have to stoop down too low. And a very low floor also means that I don't have to climb over the sill. The seating position is fairly upright. I have kept the seat pretty low, um, but as you can see, the railing is over here and the footwell drops a little bit below. But again, it's an MPV, it's not a Golf, and I have a very commanding view. There's a large panoramic roof on the inside, which we'll see in a minute. And yeah, a lot to talk about this new technology. So hop inside and we'll take a closer look. All right, let's first take a look at the steering wheel. We have the new steering wheel here with the new logo, the new texture, it feels nice, it looks premium and feels really good to touch. But what's uh, not so new are the stocks, they're fairly familiar, but nevertheless I like that there's a little bit of familiarity as well. The steering wheel itself has a lot of controls, all of this is to control your digital cockpit and this is here to control the assistance systems. So speaking of the digital cockpit, Again, we're familiar with the system. There is a plethora of options, but uh, generally the best way to handle this is to spend a couple uh, hours when you get the car, or a couple days rather, and decide what you like where and set it up and then not really have to keep worrying about it. So in that way, you can change what you see on the individual sections of the digital cockpit. So on the left section, you can say, I want to see the fuel gauge or the add blue range or the operating temperatures or the consumptions and so on. So you can have the different, um, you can have this on the left hand side and on the right hand side, for example, you can say, I want the speed, the time, my audio or telephony or, and uh, so on and so forth. So once you have that set up, then you can toggle between the overall view by pushing on the button on the steering wheel here. So now I continue to have what I've selected, but the whole screen itself is now the navigation map. Another big talking point of this generation of the Caddy is, of course, this new touchscreen infotainment system and hence the lack thereof of other buttons down here, including, as you will notice right away, no volume control and no climate control. That's all controlled by these touch sliders, which we've seen, we've discussed, we've argued, we've debated. And while I am OK with the amount of settings, I'm still not OK with the fact that we have to control these things with touch sliders because no matter how many of these I've tried, they're always a little bit, you know, you have to look at them, you have to see if it's making a real effect on the change. There's no tactile feedback 
and I really think these should just be knobs. What do you think? This is my opinion. This is also something, so, you know, objectively I think is better, but the main reason why these uh, um, car manufacturers are going in this direction is of course for cost saving. You have a lot of assistance systems as well. Let's take a quick look at some of them. Lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, side assist, dynamic road sign display, driver assist, uh, driver alert system, eco assist and autonomous emergency braking. Being the caddy, there's a lot of storage spaces. For example, like I said, I really like this uh, area over here. Very nice contoured cubbies for you to drop items in, as well as a 12 volt power socket up here so you can charge some additional um, ancillary uh, accessories that you might have. Even down here, you have a little bit of another storage area which you can probably keep some more documents. The glove box is damped and it's fairly large. Although there is no felt lining, it's a bit hard, but you also have a place to keep some cards and coins. So it is a bit more practical. Moving to the center console as well, we have another 12 volt power socket, a couple USB-C ports, and an inductive phone charger, which you can close the flap after you've put your phone down, and then you can keep more items there. All right, let's take a look in the back seat. Sliding door gives you a very wide access. And remember, with the longer wheelbase version, this uh, opening will be even larger. So again, not only for um, the, uh, the passenger version, but also for commercial vehicles, very easy to load items from the side. Getting inside is easy, but I don't have a handle. Nevertheless, tall door means getting inside is not a problem. A little bit of a reach behind me to close the door. I have a very hard panel for the door, but I still have place to keep my elbow. What's really nice, however, is the large panoramic glass roof. It doesn't open, mind you, it's just fixed, but still lets in plenty of light. Therefore, also plenty of headroom. I mean, I could wear a really tall cowboy hat, uh, no problem at all. This seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or about 1.7273 meters. And as you see, I have plenty of knee room. I can slide my feet under the front seat as well. The seats themselves are fairly comfortable. There's a lot of space on the side um, as well. And I can also change the angle of recline. I, mean, I wouldn't want to sit like this, but there's multiple steps. Maybe this would be more comfortable for longer journeys. The bench itself is a little bit shallow, I would say. It doesn't provide too much under thigh support, but on the whole, it's fairly comfortable. Isofix, 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 so no Isofix in the middle. Also, no ski hatch, it is fixed, no armrest either in these seats, and the seats also don't slide forward and backward. So this is a little bit old-fashioned. Uh, this new generation does not bring with it anything new in terms of this seating of mobility. So the diesel engine is mated in this case to a six-speed manual transmission and of course only front-wheel drive. And the steering, first of all, is very light. So it's also got a fairly fast rack. So this is perfect for city driving like this where, you know, if you have a lot of load inside the car, you don't feel that weight and the steering doesn't feel heavy. And it's so, uh, it's a fairly fast rack, so it's very easy to make corrections within the, uh, the, you know, in the tight city spaces. If you want to make a quick U-turn, for example, or a quick three-point turn, easy breezy. The six-speed manual is also very light to use. The throws are also not too long. The clutch is also fairly light, so this makes it very easy to just dawdle around inside traffic, especially if you're running this as a commercial vehicle for deliveries for your small business or something like that. Very easy to, yeah, spend an entire day driving around in city traffic in small narrow lanes. As I go over these manhole covers and cobblestones, the suspension is also fairly supple, it's fairly comfortable. I don't really feel too much of any kind of, un um, any kind of the sharpness filtering into the cabin, so it's very soft. That being said, however, I, it's again, doesn't drive like a Golf. You still have a solid rear axle, you still have, um, but thankfully you have um, coil suspension, but it still feels a little bit vague, especially in the rear. But yeah, not as bad as the, the previous generation, still not as sharp to drive, um, but gives you confidence. 
The next thing is, of course, the tall windshield in front really helps with visibility. So I have a very expansive view out front. So now when I want to join the main road again, I have a very good view out the side and out the front. Also, thanks to these tall windows, I can really see exactly what's happening along um, you know, the outside. The tall and flat and straight rear windshield also means that I have a really good view out the back through the rear view mirror. Now, on the Autobahn, how do things change for the Caddy? Well, first of all, there is a little bit more wind noise than I anticipated. So, of course, this uh, Caddy is still built down to a price and, you know, with the harder plastics and stuff like that, I do hear a little bit more of that droning. Um, but the tire noise as well is, is not too bad, but overall it's not as hushed as a Golf. Even at 100 kilometers per hour, there's a little bit more tire noise, road noise, wind noise that filters into the cabin. But again, if you put it in sixth gear and you're at motorway cruising speeds, you don't really hear the engine much. But certainly as well, you know, at 100, if you put your foot down in sixth gear, it takes a while for that turbos to really spool in and, and give that boost to get that, uh, get that punch. The steering also gets a little bit more heavy but it still feels a little bit light. But thankfully, that fast rack doesn't really make it seem unsettled on the Autobahn. So that way, I would say it's fairly confident. This car, like I mentioned, comes with, for example, the Travel Assist, which contains a combination of the different software programs for the lane keeping assist, the traffic sign recognition, and the adaptive cruise control. But even if you don't get that, you can just turn on the, uh, not, um, the or, uh, normal automatic cruise control. So right now I've set it to 120. I can select the distance I want it to maintain with the car in front. So I'm gonna keep it at a safe distance. And again, this system is, is in line with the current generation. So it's a little bit more advanced. And I like how this technology has progressed over the years. Overall, very manageable in the city, very spacious, very comfortable, really great technology. Build quality is good, although materials themselves might not be the best. Body control is not that great. And the sound insulation is also not that great. And engine performance for out and out speed and, um, and acceleration is also not that great. But on the flip side, you do get pretty good mileage. Out and out, I think the Caddy is doing what it's set out to do, and I think it does it pretty well. Let's summarize today's episode of the fifth generation Volkswagen Caddy. Prices start for the base variant, which is simply named Caddy, at 25,000 euros. Then there's a mid-spec level called the Life, and then you have the high trim level called the Style, which starts at around 33,000 euros. Add in a couple options and, well, you know what happens then. So, what did I like about this and what did I not like about this um, Caddy today? First of all, I really like the technology. I like the assistance systems that it now has. I like the interior design. I like the fact that it has that digital cockpit and even the touchscreen infotainment system is really nice and functional, very intuitive and slick. I don't like so much that I have to use the touch sliders for the volume as well as the air conditioning. I wish there were still some more buttons, but I think this is the way it's gonna be and we just have to make our peace with it. I also didn't really like the handling. I think the body is a bit roly-poly, but it's expected. This is not the Golf, this is not the Leon, this is not the Octavia, it's an MPV. But at the same time, the build quality in terms of the materials used could have been a little bit better. The rear seats could have been a little bit more sophisticated for this new generation. And overall, the sound deadening could also have been improved ever so slightly to appeal to the more common consumer who wants to use this as a family lifestyle vehicle, and not just a commercial vehicle turned into a family car. But overall, with the new generation, that this platform brings, you still get the best that it has to offer in this package. Better engines in terms of petrol options and plug-in hybrids are gonna be coming soon, as well as all-wheel drive. But if you want something fully electric, well, I think you have to look at something totally different. ID Buzz, anybody? <laughs>